Okie dokie. Um, oh, uh, let's, uh, before we begin this, let's put this down over here. Okay. And, uh, welcome to Games and Beer number 180. Uh, we're going to be playing, uh, Comic Book Tycoon today. Uh, it's an indie game. Just bought it. So, if the game sucks, and, like, I know it sucks in, like, five minutes, I'm either going to play another game and restart the stream, or I'm going to, um, just do videos. Anyway, let's, uh, let's start, uh, hello, hello, Jose Viguela, hello, Gold Knight. Um, so let's start the game. I also didn't bother to check if this would even work on my system, but whatever. Great, I've entered the land of people where Undoomed comes from. Uh, company name. Patriarchy Comics. Starting money, 150 bucks. I guess I'll be a writer. Play. Fuck am I doing? Okay, create comic. Okay, fine. New character. Uh, we'll go with female. We'll make her a hero. We'll do maybe three age. We'll put her at 19. Uh, sweet species. Human. Actually, we'll go with superhero. Audience. We'll go with adult male. Actually, fuck it. Teen male. Genre. Uh, ambiguous. And we will call her Super Dyke. I'm sorry to hear that, DJ Stockton, but don't worry. Alcohol solves all your problems. And let's create another, this time a villain, age 18. And we'll call her Cunt Licker. Make her as an enemy. Three persona. Tough superhero. Audience teen male. All right, good. Create a comic. Uh, 
have superpowers. Lead, add and live. Add character. Add cunt liquor. Oh my god. Villain, live. Create the cocksucking. Oh my god, I'm beginning to not care. Select. I'm already annoyed with this game. I don't even know, but this game's annoying the hell out of me already. Villain, female. I don't even know if that's spelt right. I'm going to go with 21. Uh, persona. Fierce, BC Heroes, Audience. And... 
Straight the fucking car, Mac. Actually, fuck it. tricks. Oh, whatever. I don't care. Ah, phase one. Okay, we'll move up world building. Dialogue just a hair. No story yet. Jack. Next. Uh, I'm beginning to hate this game already, and I'm ten minutes into it. What is up, CB? What is up, sperm? I have played Super Mario All-Stars for the SNES, CB asks. Ugh, God. This game sucks. Ugh. God, this game's fucking boring. What? Okay, I hit a wrong button, but I don't fucking care. That game sucked. So now what the fuck do I do? Beat San Andreas. Didn't really have a goddamn plan. Well, uh, hopefully, I'll play this for a little bit. Hopefully, YouTube doesn't fucking yank my stream.
Boy, did that game suck. I should have just ended the goddamn stream there, but... Whatever, I guess. I wouldn't do that in front of the girls. <laughs> Dude, what'd you eat? What is this? The boys want us to play with them? I do owe you one. I can take you to the girls, but I don't think they'll be very willing to play with boys. Do you wish to speak to the girls now? Yeah, go see the girls. I love how to be blindfolded for this. The 412th meeting of the girls is hereby called to order. Sparkle, sparkle. Sunshine! Sunshine, sparkle. Millie Larson has the floor. If it pleases and sparkles, I move that we vote immediately on the urgent matter involving Monica Ryland. Yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. right away! Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I have an urgent matter that I believe needs to be addressed first. The chair acknowledges Annie. Sunshine, sparkle. Annie Nitz has the floor. If it pleases and sparkles, a messenger comes with a request from the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Ew. 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 Yes! What request do the boys ask of us? He doesn't really talk. That's hot. The boys are playing some <laughs> new role-playing game and the new people want us to join the team. What? We don't have time for that. Something very big happened and we must do something. I know. I thought maybe he could help. Oh, that's not a bad idea. I glitter Annie's idea. Sunshine Sparkle, a motion has been glittered to have the new kid help with Monica Ryland. All right, new kid, look. There are terrible rumors going around town that our good friend Allie Nelson was spotted at the abortion clinic. I have never been to the abortion clinic. I'm not a whore. We aren't sure, but we think the girl spreading the rumors about Allie is Monica Ryland. And then she has the gall to act all nice to me. We have to know for sure if Monica Ryland is a two-faced bitch or not. So, we're gonna send Monica a Facebook page with your picture, then tell her that you're Bebe's boyfriend from Lakewood, and you want to meet her and ask her what the best thing to get Bebe for her birthday would be. And <laughs> Jesus to Christ. This is why boys do not play with girls. Right. <laughs> do this task for us, and the girls will consider your request. Sparkle! Sunshine! What am I supposed to do? You'll find Monica waiting for you at the park. All you have to do is pretend to be Bebe's long-distance boyfriend. When the job is done, come see me. Whatever they ask you to do, remember we need their help. All right, I'm not. Uh, I don't know. To be brutally Is honest. You made an alliance with the goth kids? If shit goes down, I'll come running. Oh, hi. You must be Mike. So, you want to talk about Bebe, huh? Well, look, Bebe's my friend. I think she's really great. I, I don't know if she's the end-all, be-all of girls. I mean, she's a little two-faced, if you ask me. But, hey, I've read a lot of your Facebook profiles. Um, you're a really interesting boy. Aha! Uh -huh. We knew it! Some of the MGTOW things, I... Thank God we sent the new kid to spy on you, huh, girls? Yeah! Now we know you're a two-faced bitch! What do you mean? 
mean? You guys are my best friends. Then why are you hitting on my Facebook boyfriend? We brought someone else who might be interested. Monica, what the fuck are you doing? Uh-oh. Hey, Jake. Have fun, you two-faced skank. Anyway, again, again, uh, I agree with some things they say, but a lot of it is horseshit. Maybe you'll understand that. Let's just do this, all right? Way of the sword. Which is the most epic thing ever. You hit like my grandpa. Dude, I'm happy to post stupid things over with. <laughs> oh, I gained another level. Well... Yeah, well, I'll do that one. Craig's so hot, like he just doesn't give a fuck. supposed to go. And we'll go here. Oh, fast out of Well thank you, SI seven one zero 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 You know what? Do you guys want to see me stop this and maybe do a ribbon videos live? Now that you have found Jesus, he will always be with you. There's some weirdo hanging out at the public storage. I'm not going back there. Actually, I'm going to go kill Al Gore. Got my 60 cents. But yeah, if, you, if you'd like to see me do like a ribbon video live, uh, hit me up. Whoa, dude. Ouch. You're back, Junior Algorian. But why haven't you liked any of my Facebook messages? Unless... <gasps> of course. You're no normal human kid. It's you, Man Bear Pig. I have you now. Let us fight to the death. Ah, oh, Jesus, not again. Now let's see how you like sitting through a whole presentation on global warming. You cannot escape the scientific certainty of global climate change. Yeah! Ow! Ow! Go 
sarcasm. Protect the former sort of vice oh. president. Take cover. I'm hit. Hostile is taking a sweet time. Medic. Christ! <sighs> Alright. Looks like the chat wants me to quit playing games. Maybe do some ribbon videos. Which I am more than happy to oblige. Do I have anything more? Okay, no I don't. Uh, YouTube.com. And let's go with... Uh, let's go with McDonald's. Let's see, did that one... Okay, this one has been popping up forever the old country buffet your other ship uh custodial what whatever the fuck anyway i'm uh i gotta go pee i'll be right back this is for the carver of old country buffet now for those of you that are younger than me you might not actually remember old country buffet but let me go take a whiz and i'll explain exactly what it was and they never fucking had carvers. Ever. All right, let's do this.
shift duties. We'll begin with your second. Oh, I'm sorry. I Old Country Buffet was a buffet restaurant, which I don't even know how many of them still exist. Uh, I know, like, Chinese buffets exist, but anyway, this was a place where your grandparents took you, at least this was my experience, was your grandparents took you because reasons. And it was all you can eat. Of course, me being a child, I ate maybe one plate of food, and then proceeded to eat about four pounds of ice cream. Second shift duty, greeting and serving guests. Good evening. Find enough to eat today. Uh, it is basically a carvery. Boy, I'll say. Well, that's great. Would you care for some hammer beef? A little both, I think. All right. Making friendly conversations like this is a big part of greeting and serving guests. There's only one problem with the meat that he's slicing. It's drier than the fucking Sahara. At other buffet-style restaurants, guests often feel they're on their own. Once they've paid for the meal, no one pays much attention to them. At Old Country Buffet, we work hard to make sure our guests never feel that way. As a carver, you spend a little more time with guests and other team members. That means you have a great chance to make them feel welcome and appreciated. By greeting the guest warmly and holding brief conversations as you serve them, you say to our guests, we're glad you're here. Let's take a closer look at greeting guests. Every conversation you hold with guests... That turkey was drier than shit. That ham was drier than Ann Coulter's cunt should begin something like this. Good evening. Or... Hi, how are you? Once you've greeted the guest, start a brief conversation. Try asking a question the guest can answer in a sentence or two. Hi, my name is Dave. I'll be your carver tonight. Have you been checked for general warts? You might ask something like this. Is it still hot out there? Or this. Did you catch a game last night? No, I didn't. Just carve me my fucking meat, dickhead. Or this. Have you tried the lasagna? It's my favorite. Yeah, I stuck my dick in it. It was exhilarating. Don't forget to hold quick conversations with our younger guests, too. Children often play a big part in deciding which restaurant their parents visit. We want them to feel welcome and special here, too. The only reason any kid in the history of ever wanted to eat at Old Country Buffet was one fucking reason. It was not the carvery. It was not the food. It was the fucking soft serve ice cream thing. Again, when I went there as a child, I had one plate of food and four pounds of ice cream. My parents didn't care because we didn't go there all that often. Because, well, the food sucked. I mean, just not for nothing. So start conversations with children by saying something like this. What grade are you in at school? That sounds like something that would get you registered on the sex offender registry. Or this. Have you decided what dessert you're going to have? Would you like some candy? I have it in my van. Or this. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? Once you've held a brief conversation, it's time to move on to the second half of this shift duty, serving the guests. Begin by asking, Why have you come into my restaurant wearing a uniform cult cloak? Would you care for some ham or beef? Ham, please. Once guests have chosen what meat they no, want, No, I have not, Crazy Chris. a slice of it. Exactly what size of slice you will serve. Uh, I'll check it out after I'm done on the live stream. Well, I, uh, I, might, I might just check it out on this here live stream, Crazy Chris. Will be a judgment call on your part, unless this makes a special request. We don't limit the can have. We do, however, manage it to reduce waste. Here are some guidelines for knowing how much meat to serve a guest. When your guest's plate has very little on it, 
Carve a full cut. Lay it over the bare portion of the plate. Children usually prefer smaller portions. Carve them a smaller cut. Place it on an open section of the plate. Yeah, unless that child is a male of about 12, and then you might as well just give him the whole damn ham. If your guest's plate looks like this, quarter cut or a half cut of the meat the guest requests. Some oh no, I'm trying to be I'm the new Mama June. I need that whole fucking ham, bitch. Sometimes guests will tell you exactly what size of cut or number of pieces they want. Other guests will ask... Who the hell is this lady? The Red Blazer Realty Lady? ...you to carve a slight thicker than our usual dime width. These guests all feel they're getting more when getting a thicker cut. Actually, but considering we steal the ham from crackhead hobos, it doesn't matter. The thin cut ensures them a tender piece of meat, which is why we carve dime thicknesses. If a guest asks you, <laughs> can I have a few slices of that roast beef, please? Say something like this. I'd be glad to carve you that. Thinner slices are more tender, though. Would that be all right? You can always come back up for more. Okay. Of course, if the guest insists on... Okay, this is where they fuck up. Roast beef is a term for any big hunk of beef that's been roasted in an oven. Now, if it's something like an eye of round roast, then yes, thinner slices are preferred because the meat is ungodly lean. But if it's something like a prime rib roast, for example, then no, you want thicker cuts. Depends on what part of the damn cow we're talking about. And by the way, that thing looks so fucking dry, I'd have a better chance of getting fucking moisture out of the goddamn Queen of England's fucking cunt after I licked it for three hours. On a thicker slice, honor the request. No matter what the topic of your conversation has been, or what size slice you've served, you will end each guest contact with the same phrase. How's that for you? That's fine, thanks. Asking how's that makes sure guests are happy with the slice they received. If they are not, or if they also want a slice of a different meat, you can correct... Meaning, if you have any sort of charisma or talent or ability to tell jokes at all, you should leave Old Country Buffet and form your own carvery restaurant. The situation prompt. Or buffet restaurant, whichever. Guests will sometimes ask you questions about the food we serve and how we prepare it. To be ready for these questions... Oh, I'm the nostalgic 1980s tough guy. I got a mustache and a black t-shirt on. Make the most of opportunities to learn about our menu items. If you are asked a question you can't answer... Find someone who can answer it. Uh, CB, no, I have not encountered demons, ghosts, or no other paranormal things because they don't fucking exist. The nearest manager is usually a good... Oh, I never wanted to be a manager. Dad forced me into this. ...place to start. Your third shift duty is maintaining the carving station. As you carve and serve meats... Your station quickly loses the cleanliness and appeal it had when the restaurant opened. Throughout your shift, you'll complete routine cleaning and maintenance tasks to... Okay, now, judging from its size, I can't tell if that's a sirloin roast or a chuck roast. Both are about the same size, but... A chuck roast has way more fat on it. And I'm not talking like delicious fat like a prime rib roast where it melts into your mouth. I'm talking like the type of shit you gag on, you eventually throw up all over the nice waitress, and you're banned for life from the restaurant. I, if I had to guess, that's a sirloin roast. So, in this instance, actually, the dude is correct. Thinner slices are more tender, but then again, that whole roast has about as much flavor as licking sand. To return your station to its original appearance, here are some of the tasks you'll complete. 
Wipe grease from the carving board with a paper towel. Grease and meat scraps spoil the appearance of your station. Wipe them away frequently. D oh no, I want my carving station to look like something out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre! Discard the used paper towels in the wastebasket immediately. Keep the wastebasket in a spot that is... Then, wipe the carving board, front board, and stainless steel surfaces with a clean... Oh my god, you gotta be fucking kidding me. He's wearing a steel guard, hand guard. Uh, sanitized. To, to carve meat that's about 130 degrees. Towel. In between groups of guests to wipe your carving knives and chef's forks with your clean, sanitized towel. Keep an eye on the walls, mirrors, sneeze guards, and floors. Jesus Christ, don't we have janitorial staff for this? Around your station to make sure they stay clean. Yes, and that's what... Oh, shit. All right. Yes, that's what I look for in my carvery, chef. I want them smelling of bleach and Lysol. They aren't. Use the time between guests to clean them. Floor spills immediately by guarding the area personally or putting up a wet floor sign until the spill can be cleaned up. Damp mopping the area with hot, soapy water. Yeah, this is exactly what I want the carvery chef to do while serving guests. And leaving the wet floor sign in place until the area is completely dry. Be sure to wash your hands after performing every cleaning task. Rinse out your towels frequently in sanitizing solution. Towels that aren't sanitized frequently not only are unappetizing to look at, but they also leave streaks on the stainless steel. Maintaining the carving station includes maintaining carving knives. To keep your knives sharp and ready to carve, you use a grooved steel rod called, appropriately, the steel doesn't actually sharpen the knife. It hones it by aligning microscopic burrs on the edge of the blade. After cutting about 10 to 15 slices of meat, you will notice that your knife isn't cutting as easily as it was when it was first sharpened. It's then that you use the steel to restore the knife's edge. Here's how to use the steel. Note that the process is described for right-handed carvers. If you are left-handed, Reverse the process. Before you start, put a carver's protective glove on each hand. Hold Why? the steel in your left hand. Hold the steel so the point is up. You will keep the steel's tip up throughout this process. Hold the knife in your right hand. Place the blade of the knife at the base of the steel on the side furthest from you. There is a guard the on the steel. Facing up blade up the steel working left to right make sure the entire blade is drawn across the steel next blade of the knife at the tip of the steel on the side closest to you again the cutting edge should face up draw the blade down left to right this hones the other side of the blades cutting edge repeat this process several times on each side of the cutting edge Draw the blade over the clean, sanitized towel lying on the carving counter. Do not hold the towel in your left hand. Your carving knives are sharp enough to slice not only through the towel, but all fingers. Remember, knives are never taken to the dish room for cleaning. Once you have wiped the seal with your clean, sanitized towel, return it to its appropriate place. Your fourth shift duty is assisting when the guest flow is light. When there are no guests at your station and you're caught... God damn, I went to Le Cordon Bleu, study the best, under the best chefs in all of France, and here I am. A carvery chef at fucking goddamn OCB. ...up on your own tasks, you'll assist line attendants. Your final shift duty is doing whatever it takes to take care of the guests. At Old Country Buffet, serving guests is our number one priority. You have many opportunities. I have never had this happen to me once in the entire time I've been alive.
opportunities throughout your shift to lend a helping hand to our guests. Every time you offer that helping hand, chances are you increase guest's satisfaction with his or her visit. Before we leave your shift duties, let's take a minute or two to look closely at something you need to be aware of every minute you're on the job. Safety. As a carver, you work in an area with a high potential for accidents. Sharp knives, grease from the hand, and the rush of a busy shift can sometimes combine to create a disaster. That's why you need to always work safely. Here are a few things to keep in mind. Treat your knives with respect. They are razor sharp, honed to an edge that cuts through meat with only a little pressure. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter to the knife if it's cutting through a ham or your finger. Don't grab for a falling knife. Let it hit the floor. In your haste to prevent it from falling, you stand a 50-50 chance of grabbing the blade, not the handle. Take extra... Depends on where you grab the handle and why. Extra time and care when you're washing knives. When both your hands and the knives are wet, it's easy to slip if you're hurt. Jesus Christ! So the chef has to fucking... Clean his own knives as well? They couldn't get the $3 an hour fucking illegal immigrant Maguela to do that? Hurrying. Slow down and complete the job safely. Never place knives in bus tubs, Lexans, or sinks full of soapy water. Use only sharp knives. Believe it or not, dull knives are more dangerous than sharp knives. No shit. Because you have to work harder to get a dull knife to cut, the chances of cutting yourself or a guest are much greater. Finally, be aware at all times of where the guest's hands are. Without realizing it, guests may move their hands in the path of your knife. Keep an eye out for this potential. In this video, we've examined your shift duties other than carving meat. Your shift duties are the things you will spend the majority of your time doing. Once again... This is the fucking Red Blazer Realty bitches, Seventh Order, Jesus Christ. And here are the shift duties we've examined in this video segment. Greeting and serving guests. Maintaining the carving station. All right, I'm done with this. Let's see, I did... I did that. This is the only problem where oh god this one. No, I got I got to save this one. This is the only problem with the with the Riff and Vid series is there's only so many videos I can do. All right. All right, I'm gonna. Joe is the I, I'll I'll take a, I'm gonna take a look at this. Um, now the problem is is the title itself. How Joe Rogan disowned Dave Rubin, Candace Owens, and became a leftist. Joe Rogan, to at least my knowledge, unless you're gonna provide some evidence here, has never fucking once disowned anyone, nor has had, 
Nora's basically said he's not going to talk to somebody. Joe Rogan has had his ass kicked on his own podcast, dude. Just not for nothing, progressive voice. But all right, let's uh, let's let's hear what you got. the host of the Joe Rogan Experience, the most popular podcast in the world, who has on guests who have different expertise and different ideologies. One of his guests who he had on his podcast was a political commentator named Dave Rubin, who at the time had left... Um, actually, he's had him on several times. ...the liberal online news network, The Young Turks. But after that, he is leaving the network. For, uh, he's got a great new job at Riot.org and started his own show on Aura TV, which would... Yeah, which the Young Turks completely buried his ass on. You want to hear the hatred? Hey, uh, I, I can give you a compilation video of all the awful things that the supposedly progressive fucking Young Turks said against a gay dude. With the help of Sam Harris... Because he dared disagree with them appearance on his show had kicked off. On October 26th of 2015, Dave Rubin appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience for episode number 713, in which he spoke to Joe Rogan for over three hours. The most notable piece of this long interview was Dave Rubin explaining to Joe Rogan his disdain for his former boss at the Young Turks, Cenk Uger. He voiced his displeasure with Cenk Uger's debate with Sam Harris over the varying degree of harm that Islam brings compared to other religions, of which Rubin states that Cenk Uger was being, quote, dishonest. Jo he was. Okay, he was. Just, okay. I hope you're going to provide me some evidence, but Rogan whatever. Rogan also nods in agreement and gives his opinion on this stating that indeed he believed that Cenk Uger was being dishonest and that Sam Harris was on another level from him. He also stated that Uger was just trying to win and that despite being a former guest on the podcast... That's all Cenk Uger tries to do. I don't have to take this thing from eight years ago. I can do it from Cenk Uger's own fucking congressional run. You know, when he was screaming at the old man that he's a bigot. Because the old man disagrees with him politically? Podcast, he had basically lost all of his respect for Uger. What is it with Cenk? What, I mean, you, you know him. I, that, that was really perplexing to me because I usually feel like whether I agree with him or don't agree with him, opinion, he thinks about it, he talks about it, he tries to be open-minded, he's passionate about these ideas, but with that, it was so confusing to me because it was almost like he was just trying to win. And I think that Cenk... It's not at the same level as Sam when they come when it comes to debating these ideas. You have to understand the time frame that this happened in. This was in the 2015-2016 time, the rise of Donald Trump, and the online internet culture becoming full of anti-SJW content and positions. It became mainstream on YouTube and online platforms. Um, if anything, it's gotten worse since then. And... Now, you're going to ask, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that the the blowback of against leftism has gotten worse. Look at the officer Tatum. I'm going to use this one guy as an example. I know it's one guy. I get it. But fuck it. Look at the officer Tatum. Okay, I got a YouTuber I do enjoy. But I didn't know something. Go to a social blade page. He was a kind of a thing. And then all of a sudden, about two months ago, this motherfucker goes from about 250,000 subscribers to, to over a million. Seems to me his message is resonating with someone... platforms to be an anti-social justice warrior and in this situation 
Dave Rubin was viewed. Well, I got news for you. TJ has gone full SJW, so you got him back. Is the anti SJW, and Joe Rogan was also in agreement with this, falling into the mainstream beliefs that were held on YouTube and social media. Dave Rubin would then appear once again on November 7th, 2016, the day before Donald Trump was elected, and they would talk about things like gender pronouns. Pronouns, like right. uh, uh, the, a guy who becomes a woman wants to use he or, or wants to use she or her. Right. So it's not them. It's just nonsense. This weird Marxism thing that's going on. It's this very strange leftist bullying. I guarantee you, progressive voice, I know you're very young. I didn't think you were this young. But leftism always fails. It always ends in the same place. It's called the gutter. It, it, is... it's, it's so deranged. Then on May 8th, 2018, the formation of the, quote, intellectual dark web would be made, which included both Rogan and Rubin. Their union and friendship seemed to continue to cement, and there seemed to be no problems. But very soon, that would drastically change. Less than a month later, on May 31st, 2018, a rising star in the Republican Party named Candace Owens would appear on the Joe Rogan podcast. Careful there, Bucky! Can't say too much against Candace Owens. I mean, she's a goddamn black woman. You can't be talking too much shit about her. In this podcast, Owens would completely expose herself as a fraud and completely lacking any intelligence. In this episode, she would argue that climate change isn't real. You don't I thought... think we have to care about the environment? Like, what no, you... no, not even a little bit. Like... Not even a little bit? <laughs> no. Do you, okay, let me, let me clarify this. I don't throw trash on the ground. Do I believe in climate change? No. Stating that she doesn't trust dot com. Boy, did you cut a lot of that off. Tom's information but then responding that she doesn't believe any of the .org information on scientists' agreement on the existence of climate change that Rogan brought up during the podcast. 7% of scientists said that human activity is driving global warming, yet only half the American public, public ascribed to that view. So, well what, what? well, what the fuck do you want us to... You see, here's the thing. This is where I would have hit Rogan. What do you want us to do about it? Because power is everything. If we shut down the coal plants, if we shut down the nuclear plants and we go all on it and we go all in with windmills, guess what? We're going to be Amish. That's that would have been my response. And also the climate has changed far more radically long before humans ever came. Website is 87. This? this is Scientific American. Yeah. Yeah. Dot com, though. Like, cause it, that, that means it's it's making money. I don't trust that. If it was a dot org, I would probably take that. But that this is just a random website. And well, I, I don't Scientific trust American it. is not necessarily a random website. It's yeah. I don't I don't believe this like at all. Just so you know, you don't believe it like at all. <laughs> I, I genuinely. <laughs> well, OK, this was not a great moment from Candace Owens. Now, are you. You're going to conveniently ignore the other times that she's trounced your sorry leftist ass. But, you know, I'll admit, this was not a great moment for Candace Owens. I genuinely don't believe it. I know you do, but I genuinely well, don't believe it. I like, believe... Modern scientist. Yeah. Org. They almost... It's it's a pretty broad right. consensus. Who do they... Yeah, who, do, who are they um, polling? Is it the people Scientists? that are a part of this dot, <laughs> That's, this dot org? That's what I'm asking. 10, I think that just numbers can be... 306 scientists to confirm over 97% of climate scientists agree and over 97% <sighs> of the scientific... Art okay, you're focusing on 10 minutes of a three-hour conversation that I've listened to the whole of. Also... Dave Rubin is not on the fucking right, asshole! It's a not believing something. Well, no, it's not. This was the beginning of the end for Dave Rubin. Candace Owens was heavily sponsored by Dave Rubin, and the beginnings of the newfound belief that, hey, maybe these people don't know what they're talking about and are just moron grifters was starting to form in Joe Rogan's brain. Shortly after having on Candace Owens, Rogan then had on Rubin for the third time on his podcast on June 13th. In this podcast episode, 
they would both get into back and forths about regulations, specifically talking about building codes, to which Rubin stated that the free market makes regulation unnecessary because every worker wants good Yelp scores, and that will make it so they don't cut any corners. But Joe... Okay. You're talking... Oh, my God. You're talking about me and a buddy having a conversation and me just spitballing ideas. No one's an idea. Is Dave Rubin's proposal that insane? No. But practicality speaking, uh, we probably shouldn't do it. But then again, I would also like to tear down a lot of the building regulation codes. Joe Rogan's father was an architect, and he has a personal familiarity with the subject and is aware of the corner cutting that happens and the requirement for regulations when it comes to building. This set off Rogan, who would explain to Rubin that you need pollution regulations and building code regulations. Right now, right? Do you want the government to tell you how to do all these things and all the regulations that you got to have your electric thing this far from this and like well, all the, the regulations like that for construction are important though. You do have to make sure that people don't do stupid shit. But make but sure generally, you don't have a power line it's near a water line. It's though they want to build things that are good. Now I get it. Oh, I get, that's not true. Listen, people. No, cut, no, people are going to build corners all the time. Like you have to have regulations when it comes to construction methods, they, or people are going to get fucked. They cut corners when there are regulations anyway. They do. They would cut a lot more if there weren't regulations. I'm not totally... If you go to third world countries and look at construction methods, they're fucking dangerous. Yeah. That's why schools collapse on kids in foreign countries sometimes. Like, Well, I'm not complete... I'm not telling you that I'm against all regulation, period. Intellectually, I like that argument because you could make a... I think you can make a very... Okay, your use of jump cutting here is really dubious, dog. very sound argument that competition would force people to do better work like if you're a plumber you have a vested interest in doing the best plumbing job you can rate you on yelp so that you will get more work up and short things and do things terrible they're not thinking logically but they're i don't think it's the government heads. i don't think it's the government that they're like ah, the government gave me this regulation so that's why i'm gonna do it right well if you they didn't I mean? have any regulations there'd be no incentive whatsoever to do it right no there Listen, man, I was in no. construction my whole life. My dad was an architect. Yeah. I've been in construction since I was a little kid. You fucking need regulations. These guys, a lot of people that are in construction, they're, they'll do whatever the fuck they can to make money, and it's not good for the people that have the house. They might have that house for five, ten years before that problem manifests itself. The, the people who are establishing these codes are licensed builders or people that have been involved in construction for a long fucking time and they know what's safe and what's not safe. That's why those codes exist, to protect the consumers. You can't just protect the consumers through the marketplace because so it I'm takes not a long for time for these problems to become a real issue and these problems could potentially damage everybody in the neighborhood. Like Absolutely. You have to be real careful with construction. I get it. And, uh, you know, my dad wasn't in construction, so I'm not privy to like all of that. I genuinely believe that as a general level, people have a vested interest in, especially now because of phones and apps and Yelp and all of the mm -hmm. things, doing good work because that's how you will get more work. It not only that, but they would also get into a back and forth over the US. Oh my God, dude, you have caught at least seven times in the last clip. Like, I stopped counting. You're not even good at deceptive editing. You suck at it. Jesus Christ. U.S. Postal Service, which Rogan is fond of, but Rubin says is completely unnecessary, stating that prices would go down because, quote, competition would start kicking in. Do they do the post office well? No. What, like, what do they do well? They do the post office pretty good, actually. But guess what? If the post <laughs> office closed tomorrow, it would be all right. You'd still get mail. Get, would Amazon suck. would pick. No, it wouldn't. Amazon would, would pick that up. You'd have to send things through UPS. It would cost a lot more. It wouldn't, though. Competition would start kicking in and between UPS and FedEx. and. Now, I actually disagree with Ruben, or Ruben here. 
and Rogan. My answer would be it would be mostly online, which it mostly is now. How many fucking credit card companies? How many fucking other companies that we all pay bills to have paperless statements? Amazon and drones and blah, 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 mm -hmm. and DHL, they'd all start, it would probably drop prices mm -hmm. because right now we've just got this artificial thing that sits there that then allows them to price according to that. But if you drop that. Another overlooked piece of this podcast episode was the. Again, I hate to bring this up, but no, the USPS is on borrowed fucking time. Okay. It really is progressive voice. Again, my bill rant from 20 seconds ago. Go watch that. I'm sorry, but I remember being a kid and coming home from school at, I don't know, maybe 9, 10, whatever the fuck. Picking up a pack of bills. And giving them to my mom. Picking up a pack of letters. Mostly, they were bills. That's because everyone has to deal with it. Uh, now that doesn't exist. Pretty much about 90... I'm going to just say 90% of Americans can have paperless statements for everything and cut their mail down to exactly jack and shit. The mail doesn't need to exist anymore. The portion in which Ruben claims that Candace Owens can be more in... Uh, by Amazon Vans. I, uh... She asked me the questions, how should Amazon packages be delivered? By Amazon Private Vans. I mean, that's, I think, what Amazon is moving towards anyway. Influential than Kanye West in the changing of political beliefs of African Americans, to which Rogan hilariously inquires, are you high? She's causing a massive rift in the black community. Black male support for Trump, or for Trump doubled, was at 11%, it's now at 22. No, well, it's Kanye, Kanye was the wrecking machine. Hey, progressive voice. There was a poll done, I know it was about a month ago, that showed 46% support for Trump, or 41% support for Trump in the black community. What are you going to do if that's true? I'm not saying it is. It was one single poll. But what if that's true? Guess what? Trump landslides, motherfucker. But right. I actually think I think in reality, if it is that I Trump may not lose a single state. I think in the grand scheme of things, Can Candace is much bigger. I really believe that in terms Why? of she, because I think she could be a direct line to all of the political parts of this. If she decides How to go so? that route, I think she could run for Senate or what? Yeah. Yeah. Are you I, okay? Are you high? Yeah, you I'm not high. Here? I'm not high what today. Happened? I'm not. I'm only smoking maybe once a week on Sundays. And now, only now on I'm on Sundays. tour, so I'm not really at all. But... Maybe I'll spark up a joint and have you reconsider what you <laughs> just said. <laughs> I'd even say I think she's good. I think she could have a bigger effect even than Kanye when it comes to just everything going on. Oh my God! He's just saying if she ran, if. She ran. He's not saying she would win. Oh, my God. Non politically and I'm going to ask you again if you're this, high and this you girl, be honest with me. She wants it. She wants <laughs> it, man. I'm sure she does, but when you She's hear. She's affecting people in a big way. Mm. I, I think maybe. They also get into an awkward back and forth here as Rogan doesn't want to outright state that Candace Owens. God, you fucking suck, dude. Okay, whatever. This is an idiot. But Ruben is trying to get a straightforward answer from him. And this was the deep downfall that Rogan had hit. After seeing Candace Owens on his podcast speaking completely unintelligibly about climate change, and Ruben claiming that... 
you know, chat, correct me if I'm wrong. But I do believe Candace Owens has been on the Joe Rogan podcast more than once. I could be dead wrong. I'm going to go pee. Please let me know. I'm just saying. <sighs> the only way this guy can make his point is to carve up Ruben like a... OCB ham. All right, let's keep on with this horse shit, I guess. Regulations for buildings are unnecessary. He seemed to have an epiphany. Yeah, I'll reconsider You said it. you watched the podcast I did with her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I watched, I don't know, maybe at least, at least an hour and a half of it or so. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why what? Well, I don't know. Why are you saying it that way? Because I don't think she should run for Senate. No, no, I'm not saying. I think she's a, a young girl with some interesting ideas, and she's got a lot. Okay, uh, A, has Candace Owens even reached the age to run for Senate, which I believe is 35? I believe the president is 45. Um, and, you know, Joe Rogan is right. I don't know if she should run for Senate. She would might get killed. Also, if she announces a run, she has to go through the fucking primary. Are you going to bring that up? A lot of passion. No, no, I and didn't say you. Fun. Left-wing online media had a complete field day with both the appearances of Candace Owens and Dave Rubin on the Rogan Experience. Kyle Candace Owens is still hot, by the way. Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk released multiple videos stating that... Yeah, Kyle Kalinske is a smug little cocksucker... That probably sucks his own dick. It would not shock me if I were to rip Kyle's shirt off. I'd find surgical scars about here and here to prove that he actually had ribs removed so he could suck his own cock. That Candace Owens has no idea what she's talking about. And responding to Dave Rubin's arguments about iPhone videos and Yelp covering for regulations. Liberal host David Packman, who would be someone who appeared on the Rogan podcast... David David Pakman got molested by a girl in uh, fashion videos. Now twice reacted to the appearance, stating that it was quite embarrassing. I only saw a little bit, um, and what I saw was really bad. Okay, a really bad example. And then number two, it was a port a section about the government not being good at doing things, and he used some example about UPS, USPS, and shipping live baby chickens, and it, it was just a total implosion. I mean, just absolute total implosion. And he was all sweaty during it, and I don't know if he... Well, the government isn't good at doing anything. Look at the DMV. He was sweaty because it, he was getting nervous at how bad the implosion was, or maybe Joe Rogan keeps the studio really hot. 
but it was it was not good. It was it was not not a good uh, not a good thing. But it was the majority report that would have the most popular videos reacting to Rubin's meltdown. The majority report uploaded three videos titled "Dave Rubin's Nonsense Brings Joe Rogan's Show to a Screeching Halt," which gained 466,000 views. Another titled "Joe Rogan Humiliates Dave Rubin in Logic Chokehold." which gained over 538,000 views, and another titled Libertarianism May Never Recover from Dave Rubin's Epic Stupidity, which gained 350,000 views. But the person most affected by this was Joe Rogan himself, as he would later on in November of 2018 state that there are people that he does not believe who flip their entire philosophy oh, Jesus of all of their opinions Christ, you get years, to the point! He lambasts them for crying about being attacked by leftists. And it's quite clear that he was talking about Dave Rubin and Candace Owens. And that this is possible that people could realize that there's some, some stupidity to this uh, team mentality that we have. Right. This right versus left, which is almost all... Okay. You are a propagandist at this point, you piece of shit. You are taking a clip. Out of a show, not even showing the show. I think I know the, the show you're talking about. And it had nothing, nothing to do with Candace Owens. You've done this narrative to try to paint Joe in the way you want to paint him. Because you like his podcast, but God forbid you actually like someone who is to the right of Lenin. You better hope Joe never finds this video, dude. Otherwise, you're in for a real thrashing. A good percentage of it is these assumed identities, right? These, uh, these predetermined patterns that get adopted in order to, as we first started talking about this, in order to establish yourself as someone who's in a group. Right. You, you get accepted by this group. And you see it left and right. I mean, I don't want to name any names, but there's a bunch of people that do it blatantly. You what? Okay. Um, there is that mentality. But I have seen disagreements with Dave Rubin and Candace Owens. I've seen disagreements with Miley Yiannopoulos and Candace Owens. I've seen disagreements. Disagreements pop up all the time on the right. It's just they can act like adults. When disagreements pop up on the left, it is burn that motherfucker to the ground. And that's this jackass's problem. See them. I've even seen them switch teams. And you see them switch teams. And I don't, I don't buy their rationalizations when it comes to ideology. What I think is what they're doing is they're switching teams because they realize there's an in on this team. Right. And they can just say, this is the problem with the team I used to be on. Those fucking losers. And they're, they're really Benedict Arnold. Right. And like, like they probably have as much of an affinity to the ideas of one side as they do to the other side. They just go all in on one side to get acceptance from the group. Right. Yeah, there's no way people change their opinion that much over two years or something like that. Or you know, it's like they just decide this group makes more sense now. And I've been attacked by people on the left, so I'm going to go to the right or vice versa. And usually, what it is is, I mean, when, even when they say they've been attacked, like, oh, you fucking baby, there's f 300 million people just in this country alone. If you put something out there publicly and a thousand people attack you, don't act like you're being persecuted, okay? You have an idea, you've, you've, you've launched that idea out into the zeitgeist, and people took a big shit on it. You know, whether it's people on the right or people on the left, you got to be able to argue your point one way or the other and not just immediately jump ship when someone who shares ideas with you decides that your idea sucks. And maybe they're wrong, and maybe you're right, but you got to argue that through. But this idea of... These partisan patterns that people just seem to automatically fall into, they're so detrimental to dialogue. In early 2019, Dave Rubin would do an interview with Tim Pool, who asked him about the building codes incident on Joe Rogan's podcast. And Is he going to bring up the Tim Pool incidents on the Joe Rogan podcast? Gonna, gonna, gonna bring that? Oh, oh, no, of course you're not. Probably, maybe. I don't know. 
He's got seven minutes. Ruben explains that he did not expect to get into a heated back and forth with Rogan about it and said that he, quotes, likes talking about ideas. Uh, three times. So there, there was one particular incident where uh, Rogan was asking you about why you believe in less government control. Yeah. People felt like you didn't know what you were talking about, that you were advocating for a position, that you weren't... No, so this was, uh, I think specifically, this is the last time I was on Rogan, and it was, we were talking about building codes, I think was the right. specific part of it, yeah. Oh, you've been dragged And I kept, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And what if Rogan has this motherfucker back on? What the fuck are you going to say then, dude? You know, if I have a down-and-out, drag-out fight with someone, I want that motherfucker back. You know, let's finish it. That's just me, though. Anyway. And I said, I, we were talking, well, it was in the framework of talking about limited government. And I said at the beginning of this, this is not like my particular point of interest like building codes or even regulation specifically like the nitty gritty parts of regulation uh, I like talking about ideas that's what I like talking about yeah. so like we got into some nitty gritty thing about um, about building code regulation and I said something like you could have private regulation for some of this and that well unfortunately Dave Rubin is pulling out of his ass but then again he's a gay dude most leftists don't expect gay people to build anything and yeah, Rogan was completely correct. You can build a house and have a flaw in it and not have that flaw pop up for 40 fucking years. You'd have an agreement between the buyer of the house and the seller of the house that maybe that's not exactly the role for government. But several times in that, I said, if you want to talk to somebody who really knows this better than I do, I said, talk to Yaron Brook from the Ayn Rand Institute. Yeah. And these guys are more radical libertarians, let's say. They, they, they call themselves objectivists, but they're radical libertarians. Right. And I kept saying, this is not really a position I have, but I thought we were just having sort of like a fun uh, it, it intellectual like exercise. Criticism, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, because I saw the usual suspects just tweeting it at me all day long, and it's like, <laughs> I, you know, all right. You know, it's funny. I had dinner with Joe, I think, that night or maybe two nights after. Was that You, you ever saw that picture of me and Sam and Joe and a whole bunch of us at dinner? The yeah, boys yeah. Used to so, and I said to Joe, I was like, oh, I'm getting some heat for that. And he's like, he's like who cares? Like, who cares? Like, why would you care? Uh, yeah, and I have heard Joe say, I don't give a fuck what people say. I just don't care. Joe is not your friend. Joe is not some PC leftist dickhead. And I was like, oh, yeah, why would I care? I, I know, I think I know exactly where where he's going with this. The Bernie Sanders interview. And in October of 2019, leftist political commentator Kyle Kalinske, the host of Secular Talk, would appear on Joe Rogan's podcast. And in the podcast... Oh, yes. And he acted like the most arrogant cocksucker on the planet. I have watched this podcast. Please, patrons, don't make me do a live stream to this podcast. As Joe Rogan would make fun of the, quote, classical liberals, saying that most people don't even know what that means. This clearly was a shot at Dave Rubin and his ilk. I net because and then people like to get sneaky. Uh, and no, it doesn't. He references the, quote, dumb libertarian argument he had with Dave Rubin without mentioning his name after Patton brings up building regulations being necessary. Another clear shot at Dave. It's very yeah, I important. Mean, again, visit any third world country after an earthquake and look at all the crumbled buildings with no rebar and go. Yeah, well, those countries are shitholes. Do you really want no building inspectors and no regulations <laughs> exactly. on it? Like, is that what you're fighting exactly. for? Because it'll all fucking crumble. Dude, you know? I've had that so, argument with people, that stupid libertarian argument. I'm like, look, my dad's an architect. Go on to his podcast to promote his new release right. book. But that I don't Rogan care about Patton Oswalt. Once Ruben even acknowledges just how odd this is for him to even say to the public. Another sign that Rogan has completely discarded of Dave Rubin. Will I go on Rogan's podcast? I asked him, and our PR people asked him uh, about a bajillion times to go on for my book. We did not get a response, as far as I know. So I don't know what happened there. It's a little weird for me to say that publicly. I don't know what happened. Uh, it is very... 
Uh, is it because Rogan doesn't like you anymore, or is it because Rogan is booked up probably a year in advance? Interesting. To see the contract. And Rogan is still trying to keep his schedule open for stand-up comedy dates. You are aware that the Joe Rogan experience is not his job. Oh no, he's still a comedian. So he's waiting for the fucking lockdowns to end. ...that just a couple of years can make. At the start, Rogan looked at Ruben as someone necessary to fight against the crazy lefties. But now looks at Ruben as just a hack, grifter and a fraud who makes dumb libertarian arguments about not needing building code regulations. It is also simply fascinating to look at how Joe Rogan focused on the anti-SJW content in 2015 and 2016, but slowly in the following years started having on people like Kyle Kalinske, Jimmy Dore, David Pakman, and likely Sam Cedar or Michael Brooks at some point in the future. He went from talking bad about... And if he doesn't, if he has people like me or... You know, he's had a lot of right-wing people on, too, motherfucker. Just not for nothing. Oh, God. Oh, God, we've only got a minute minute left. All right, let's get through this. We're going to power through the last 60 seconds. ...about leftists all the time to then debating Dan Crenshaw on healthcare and advocating for Medicare for all. It is truly quite an interesting shift that Joe Rogan has made over recent times. Did you enjoy today's recap episode? Oh, thank God! Also, you spent one second on the day, uh, yeah. And Joe Rogan would have an aneurysm if he debated me. Because I don't care. I'm willing to let people die. We're all dead anyway. Just a question of when. Alright, um... You know what? I think this is where I'm gonna. I, I think this is where I'm going to uh, end the broadcast. So, um, good night, everyone. Uh, stay safe. If you've been smoking dope or drinking beer, get a goddamn Uber home or a uh, Lyft home or whatever the fuck car services are there and here and there. And I, I don't care. Anyway. Good night, everyone. I will see everyone later. Uh, be safe. Blah, 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 blah. Actually, you know what? Stab a leftist in the testicles.